Welcome to the Lot Book Show. This is episode 60 for the 9th of January 2018. Welcome, welcome to the world of tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, on tonight's show, we've got Gideon, Loris, Gideon Lawrence from Wyvern Tales, our predictions for 2018, abuse in LARPs, Facebook shop, and more. I'm Stuart Edwards, and of course with me as usual is Luke. The only place I can actually grow hair is right by the in my goatee uh, pit. Uh, Rob, I can absolutely grow hair just about anywhere that I want to grow hair, god damn it. And Busby, I have grown hair wherever the hell that I want to, uh, Busby. <laughs> uh, and of course we have Gideon there as well. Uh, hello Gideon, how are you? I'm very well, yourself? I'm very good, thank you. Did you have a good Christmas? I did. Yes. Did you all have a good one? We did, yes. I had a good one. Luke, Rob, Tom. Oh. Yeah, good one. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Fantastic. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I definitely know that definitely. Gideon had a very good uh, New Year because uh, of, of what's happened with stuff that we're going to talk about. So <laughs> I tell you oh, what, yes. let, let's get straight into that, shall we? So uh, right then. Um, Gideon. Yes. Uh, you you tried doing um, a bit of a Kickstarter a little while ago that, that didn't go so well. Correct. Um, and uh, so you decided, I, I know what, I'll have another crack, <laughs> crack at this Kickstarter thing. Uh, and it's done uh, rather well, uh, I see. Uh, when I looked at it just before we came on the show, it was up to £2,622 of your uh, wanted £2,000 goal. So mm-hmm. well done you to begin with. Thank mm-hmm. you. Fantastic. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. What what sort of made you kind of um want to do this anyway? What what was the, the emphasis behind it? We just before Christmas, uh we got the chance to run a pop up, just a small um shop for a month or two in X. This isn't gonna go anywhere. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. So we filled it for the stock, um we got some people on board. Um, we ran it for about a month and a half. Okay. And it made money. Oh, well done. Shockingly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and not just from LARPers, but from all sorts of people, uh, people who just walked past or walked in. The amount of people who came in and said, I've always thought about LARP, but never known how to get into it, Right. was huge. Oh, um, so we, so thought, we thought... If this is working, let's try it again. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. So naturally, those people that came in and asked that question, you diverted them straight to LARP book, didn't you? That, that's... Oh, of course. Hey, yeah, there we go. Can anyone else see his nose yeah. growing? <laughs> <laughs> it needs it. There's seven or eight LARP groups in Exeter. Huge plethora of different events to go to. Okay. So one of the things that we were very careful about was to talk to people about the different options that they had available to them, yeah, all the good. different things they could do, what sort of events they might want to try. Yeah. Um, because the more people try things and find things that they enjoy, the more likely they are to come back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yep. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's like everything, isn't it? I mean, whatever you actually enjoy, you tend to actually sort of go back and have another go at did you so uh, mm-hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. um and it must have really helped as well having all of the kit there that people could see and and sort of try on and, and play with a little bit you know absolutely I, I don't care who you are but if if you if you put a mace in, you know in in someone's <clears> hand <throat> with some leather armor there is not one person in the world that doesn't go nice <laughs> 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 yeah we found that a lot people would come in we had a giant hammer um in the for, in the window yeah yeah and people used to walk past double take come back <laughs> and every now and again just come in and go is that, is that giant hammer <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah pick it up and have a go on it yeah you'd be surprised how many people would then buy something in it, in it. Is that a giant hammer no hammer. we we just get rats so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it's useful. big rats, rats. rats. it's useful <laughs> Excellent. So, um, is 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 Wyvern's Tales um, the shop and a LARP, or is it just a shop? How does that actually work? 
Ah, uh, the complicated question. <laughs> um, I run Forest Argent as a okay. not for profit. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that runs under the banner of Wyden's Tales, but is all entirely separate to the point where we're trying to get the name changed so okay. that it, there's no further complication. Wyvern's Tales runs bespoke events, so okay. we still run events for people, um, pen dues, stag events, that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. And we run workshops for schools and community events. Yeah. So we still do that, but we had the opportunity to, to try the shop, so we thought we'd do that. Okay, yeah, no, I mean, uh, from from what, <clears throat> from what I, I could see as well, you know, following you on, on Facebook and the things you were posting up, it did seem as though it was, you know, it, it was a winner. There's no two ways about it. It's surprisingly so. I mean, the growth of the hobby in the last couple of years has been amazing okay. and slightly scary in some ways. <laughs> yeah. um, suddenly we're not just the geeky kids that get bullied at lunchtime. It's very strange. Yeah. Um, then now we get bullied at tea time as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we don't get yeah, bullied anymore because we got we we got swords and stuff and giant hammers. Yeah, that's that's always helped. <laughs> so so what so Wyvern's Tales and that's the one that does it said it does bespoke events, does community mm -hmm. school events. Yeah. So I mean, one of the things I'd like to ask you is going to schools. Are you finding a good uptake for from those? Because um. What we do in the schools is more history based. So we yeah. do something called What If uh, workshops, where we give the kids historical characters yeah. from a point of decision, such as the Synod just before 1066. Okay. And then we give them the characters of the people yeah. who'd have been there and let them make their own decision as, as to who they would have chosen for the King of England. Oh, right. And then we timeline that through to figure out how that would have changed what happened in the ensuing years. Yeah, yeah. And that gives oh, wow. them a real chance to look at it as if they were there. Which is have an effect. Okay. And that's really good for sort of social constructing and history yeah. and mm. getting kids engaged in history. The fact that we can then give them a bunch of swords that they can whack each other with for the next half hour <laughs> is just an added bonus. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really, Gideon, what you've uh, what you've started there is only really what we've been talking about for for many years. This mm -hmm. this whole concept of them using LARPing as um, an educational tool, um, and I've always I've always thought that if anyone was brave enough to start that, yeah. that there would be a big uptake. Not only just because you can wallet people with swords, which is why I started doing it for God's sake, um, <laughs> but also because you are you are teaching without people actually realising that they're they're learning, and yeah. that's an amazing thing from an educational point of view. Yeah. Um, sorry more. to be so serious. I will stop. No, anyway, absolutely. No. Um, but um, yeah, and it's it is it is very good, and and, and you're you're quite an interesting character with that lovely moustache. I have to say. Uh, being the magpie that I am, I can't stop staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and there are things that I just need to know, like how many times do you need to gel it? Of a... Does it you... ever go wonky? And then just all of a sudden you kind of go... Yeah, that's, that's um, sad time. And how do you wake <laughs> up and what does it look like when you wake up? Do you have this kind of this car crash of a, a, of a kind of like a moustache that just you don't want to want to show anyone? No, no, what he does, he, he, he actually sort of... Uh, uh, <laughs> His little net. <laughs> he, <laughs> little barrow net. I'm trying to think of the words. He gets sellotape, but he just sellotapes it to his face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've got to be really careful how you take it off, because that's, that's going to be a career breaker, isn't it, really? If you, you've got all your... <laughs> you just can straight off. Indeed. Let's just put it this way. There's a reason you never see General Melchett in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> but that's but. all making sense now. That is all. Yeah. <laughs> so where do you um where do you see Wyvern Styles going then? I mean, if you if you're starting to look at schools now, um, there is of I mean, there has been a massive uptake in in la uh, LARPing because of our show. We know we're making a huge, magnificent nap. Um, you know, kind of uh, no, no, really, we are uh, with our yeah. thousands of listeners, thousands, um, thousands across the globe i mean you know we're huge we we door now gideon yeah. without really getting noticed uh without... i'll take a spare pen with me just for 
without, with, 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 you know, we, we, we cannot walk out the front door without no. someone sort of saying, um, do you want your windows cleaned? Um, yeah, or uh, get out my way. Mm, uh, you know which is something we do get quite a lot of but i mean you know kind of i mean do you do you predict that there's going to be a riot um you know if is a is there going to be is this going to get bigger i mean you've tried that shop now that is is that going to happen again we're suddenly going to reopen in the next couple of months and the kickstarter has been very successful we tried it just before christmas but that was just before christmas and we looked at it and we listened to feedback. We went and got some finance from other places and we tried it again. And it has been explosively uh, responded to. Uh, it ha- um, I remember watching it. It was just so fast. 48 hours, fully funded. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, it's been really good to do. And so next couple of months we'll open again. That gives us somewhere to meet and greet people as well. Because... How can I put this? There is a there is a problem with perception for role players. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that role playing can teach you social skills, um, how to look past things, how to communicate, timekeeping, how to work with other people, all of those things. Yeah. There is a perception that role players, gamers, etc., are sweaty, unpleasant people that you don't really want to socialise with. Um, <laughs> and having somewhere to walk into and actually meet someone, suit, boot, shake mm. their hands, talk, talk to them, goes a long way to dispelling those myths. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, I know, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting feedback from someone, guys, is someone not got the got their facebook on or something like that, i don't know anyway um and, and and i know i've seen you sort of dressed up every now and then gideon on, on facebook I'm, I'm presuming in the shop you are dressed up sort of a steampunky type uh, looking character i guess suit boot tie hat <laughs> fake coat yeah there's no reason to do this if you don't have get unable to have fun with it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i agree and it looks smart Mm. Well, you might have yeah. to think of a new wardrobe for the summer, though. Otherwise, they will meet the sweaty. <laughs> 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 you know. Never. 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 <laughs> then you go into the white suits. The Piff helmet. Boater, <laughs> white suits and boater. Boater, perfect. Tied that, there and there. That's that's exactly what I, what I wear every day to work. Um. <laughs> Sensible man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Rob's added a little bit to our, our show notes, uh, which I asked him <clears> to, uh, Wyvern's yeah. histories and myths. Well, what's that about Rob? What, what, what are we asking him there? <laughs> actually, we've really talked about that. That's actually part, that actually comes under the Wyvern's Tales banner. Right. Okay, fine. Excellent. I'm just trying to get through everything here. And apparently you are also a, um, uh, an excellent storyteller. So, so Rob actually tells me. That's one of the things that we do quite a lot of, um, mostly in pubs, weirdly enough. It's strange. It's become that. quite popular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you missed a trick there, Gideon, because what you should have started is, well, oh, well, are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> then I'll begin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but every time I start that, it goes on and on, and people buy me drinks to shut me up. Anyway, are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> <laughs> Storytelling is a uh, forgotten art that, like yeah. um, role playing, is becoming more popular again. Yeah. Um, local myths, legends. It's a good way of getting history to people and entertaining them at the same time, as well as talking about our local. Wow, I'm right on the edge of Dartmoor. There's all the fairies and the dew and the strange things that go bump in the night. Yeah. There's a rich tapestry to draw from here. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's just like Cumbran. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's which folklore you just got. There is there is a rich tapestry, but we but it's it, on bricks. It got stolen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's not a good day. Uh, <laughs> just to let you know that uh, that that uh, Rachel yeah. Lucy Lawless, um, she actually says that uh, you are indeed uh, the best storyteller. Mm. Um, so there we go. Uh, also, uh, Derek has said one of the 
best storytellers in the trade, in my view. Well, Ooh. Derek, uh, thank you very much for that. And, <laughs> and go, I tell you what, you, you've got some love here, mate. Uh, Lee Wallace uh, says uh, his stories are fantastic and very engaging. Definitely need to check him out with his tales. And I'm sure that's not only the tales uh, <laughs> that you tell, but the tales <laughs> that you probably wear. Uh, <laughs> so where are you next performing then Gideon where, where are you next uh, next I'm at the Arcade in Exeter a um, couple of hours uh, not this Thursday but the Thursday after Okay. So what date and will then that be? Uh, Beer Cellar in Exeter right. on the last Sunday of the month Ooh. Okay. and uh, <laughs> what times are those so people can come and find you uh, 7 o'clock uh, sorry 8 o'clock the Thursday 7 o'clock the Sunday cool and that's obviously that's PM. Yeah. <laughs> Early yeah, start yeah. then. Yeah. Rice Krispies. Let's, let's start your day with a story. As soon as you have drinking that goes on, it may be an <laughs> interesting start of the, the morning. Really? Yeah. Gideon, I am getting a theme of these stories being told in pubs. How many drinks do you get bought? I'm curious. <laughs> I am a sober and sensible <laughs> individual until afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There you go. I believe Trevor has just actually put up one of the, one of the events. Uh, I'm hoping that is the event that he, that you've just uh, sort of said, and not going to a completely random one. Uh, so, <laughs> so awesome. if any <laughs> on on the chat, Tre Trevor yeah. Garman's done that. Thank you, Trevor. If if that is going to one of Gideon's events and not just some random thing that you found that you thought might be interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you Trevor go. Could uh, be either. Uh, <laughs> Arcade on the 18th. There we go. Sorted. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, uh, Gideon, your stick behind you. Yeah. It's behind you. We do panto as well. <laughs> um, oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> it's behind you. So it's what's the, stick. is that stick part of the... Part uh, of it's the... one of my walking sticks. Oh, I have yes. a selection. The one I'm favouring at the moment is slightly shorter and has mice running up and down it. So it's called Red Wall. Oh, right. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Is there a story behind the stick? Luke. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. See, Luke, yeah. Luke is only, Luke Gideon, Luke's only saying this because he also has a walking stick that has a slightly rude gesture on it, depending on which way you flick it. That's not true. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I've got it. I might I might be able to go and get it, actually. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I use it for a character. I found it. And it's someone lobbing the V's. And it's all one piece of wood. And it's genius. <laughs> it is oh, genius. Because genius. it can either be victory or, or flicking the V's. Whichever yeah, one you right. want to, obviously. You know. It is pretty awesome. Um, it's got the fingers at the top. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. It's just literally like that, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ricardo Todeas. I'm probably saying your name wrong. Hey, fellas. Hope you're well. Yes, we are. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, I'm well. I know Luke's pretty well. Rob looks well. And Busby's awake, so um, that's always right, you know a plus. And, and Gideon looks yeah. resplendent as per normal. Um, uh, <laughs> one of the nice. best infil infiltrator pirate I have ever met. Stolen all our gold at BBB. Is this you, Luke? The Brixham. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so so. Well, uh, you say stolen. I say borrowed on a permanent basis. <laughs> um, and let's get that very clear. <laughs> Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm, we're there oh, next year yeah. here as well. So I'm bringing a load of friends down to go and cause a lot of trouble there. Brixham uh, is is such a wonderful festival. It to go really to. is. I'm in heavily invested in helping out with Extra Pirate Day. Right. Um, okay. Which, yeah. Ex is a extra Pirate Day. Bring up extra. All right. Extra Pirate Day. Just, just bring <laughs> along an extra pirate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be well, fair, that'd nice. be good. Uh, it raises money for the RNLI, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. always good. I, I keep been to Brixham. I keep missing Pirate Day, which may say a little bit about my lifestyle, but never mind. <laughs> well, it's 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 a lovely it's a lovely you know kind of weekend, mm, and yeah. um, you know although actually they they don't do that much larping. It's very much cosplay, uh, yeah. but they do do a little bit of reenactment because they've always got mm -hmm. the cannons there and they've got the golden hind and. You know, Captain uh, Blackheart, uh, who's just who's just an institution, um, and uh, and and it's just a, it's a lovely weekend to go to. We've been going for the past couple of years, and um, you know, kind of I go as 
King King George and just go and cause trouble, which is unusual for me because you know how very, it's very 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 unusual for you, Luke. I mean, normally yeah, yeah, yeah. normally you're so uh, sort of laid back Quiet. and and just and just mm-hmm. just go with the flow. And uh, yeah, but it's the great thing because, of course, he's such a bumbling fool that that, that I've almost been accepted there. They just go, oh yeah, that's Luke. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, which is which is great because I can get away with loads. <laughs> Excellent. Always underestimate the king. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. Always. It is good. Always. Have we got any more questions for Gideon? I did it. He's a chat. Do the people in the chat want to say anything? Yeah. It's just, yeah. Uh... Anybody on Facebook? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll we, we'll carry on, and if if anybody's on on you know on Facebook and want to ask Gideon a, a question, now's the chance. And I am getting feedback from someone. <laughs> Only when I talk loud. It's not me. I know that. Well, it's not me. <laughs> not me. So not we'll... me. it's gone now. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Might have been me. <laughs> is is this going to be a the? Oh yeah, I had that page open. Um, the. Uh... <laughs> Right, so so let's. Um, I want to do. Uh, I'm not sure if I actually want to do this serious subject. So I'll 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 let you guys kind of sort of uh, uh, say yes or no to this. All right. Um, but it seems to be a bit of a bit of a, a hot button topic, and uh, people in Facebook as well. If you want to chime in on this, um, but definitely of Hollywood and the and um, the governments around the world and what have you now becoming more and more sort of. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, ratted Revenant. out. Yeah, you know, pe- people are being sort of uh, sort of found out that things have been going on. Surprise, surprise. Not that anybody in Hollywood knew that that actually happened, of course, um, since the word go. But um, and and we we started to see it as well, because I, I know that that uh, Klaus actually put up um, a bit of a post uh, about what happened to one of, I do believe, one of the guys that, that he employed got uh, accused of uh, inappropriateness um, and had to sack him, uh, etc. Uh, I mean, do we feel now as 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 LARP becomes more and more and more um, mainstream, let's use that word, although I hate that word, but more, more accepted, uh, are we going to start to see more of this sort of thing coming out or, or but you or see you you're saying that Stuart, as if it's never been there i mean you and i recall uh the gathering yeah where that one guy in character kidnapped uh another character who happened to be a woman and then got accused of um molestation yeah um and you know and i think we've got to be very very careful here that you know um some people who come into LARP, they become different people and they might get carried away and what have you. I think it's all about how you manage it. Yeah. You have to have strong leadership when you do these these kind of events to ensure that you don't put people into these kind of situations where they could either be accused or they put themselves into silly positions or, you know, kind of they're able to do anything, you know, that that's inappropriate. Yeah. Um, but I think we have to also be aware that, that this this could happen. And, and I think it's how the actual group react to that is, is what is going to be the, def, the defining thing. Uh, as Klaus rightly did, he said, look, if, if this has happened, you've got to go. Yeah. And I think if you stamp that out, um, I think if we make too much of an issue of it, people are going to be scared to come to LARP, so they're going to be scared to role play because they won't feel safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And, I, and I think that is a very, very important thing that we must never, ever lose sight of is that safety of the group within a lot so that you can become a character good and bad um and and feel as if there's not going to be that kind of um you know uh, that that kind of stigma that's going to be attached to it so I, i'm very cautious about this i think there are always going to be those people who are going to abuse yeah. and, and i think that's always going to be the case statistically that's going to happen i'm not saying it's right i'm just saying that is you know there's always going to be that element there yeah. but i think it's down to how we as individuals and groups run things i I'm very, very cautious about this because it made me quite angry about what's going on in Hollywood, that you're going to get an awful lot of people jumping onto a bandwagon yeah. unnecessarily yeah. Uh, or blowing things out of proportion. You know, when you think of half the things that, you know, we've either said in character or done, 
you know, there is there's a part of me that kind of thinks, well, are people now going to come out and oh, go, good. I found that offensive? Oh, good God! I mean, you and I alone, we can we can we can we can offend uh, we, we can offend an entire bloody game. Let's be honest. Well, I think we we pretty much have, yeah. um, you know, kind of. But I think you know, although I think political correctness should always be there, and, and I'm very mindful of this that we we should always treat people with respect, yeah. men and women. You, you know, I I I don't like this sexism because I think that place is. Yeah. Um, a brick wall unnecessarily. I think if you treat people equally, you won't ever have a problem, you know. Agree, agree. Um, but I think that we, we must also be very, very mindful that you, this could be blown out of proportion. I'm very anti that. I think, you know, kind of run your games properly, have a good set of system rules, yeah. have respect for each other, and this will, is less likely to happen. You know, um, and if it does happen, then collectively as a group, just stamp it out. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm, I mean, I, I mean, I would say as well, just to kind of add to that, that mechanisms now should, mm. you know, if, if you're running a LARP, you know, that mechanisms should be in place now for people to feel that they can come to an individual and say, look, this actually happened, you know. Um, how do you want to sort of proceed with this? Because it's, it's a difficult one to broach especially when on the majority of times you are usually role playing with friends uh, unless of course you go to a massive you know event where of course you know you might not know the person camping next to you um in in that in that respect so i just feel that that you know that that it, it would be a, it don't be afraid to 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 talk about it in your laps right it's an uncomfortable mm. subject yes yeah but when you're when you are afraid to even sort of broach the subject, that's when everything's going to fall down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we stop talking. Yeah. So you know, um, um, go on, Gideon. Yeah. Well, to go back to what you were saying, there's got to be a strict rules that everybody understands. Yeah. And B, uh, open lines of dialogue, so that if people are uncomfortable, yeah. people can come and speak to you about it. Yeah, and the details of whatever it is can come forward and be discussed and looked at. Yeah, preferably yeah. not by just one person. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a decision can be made from there, whether it's a warning or an outright ban or whatever you decide to do. Yeah, there should be clear lines of, and if this happens, this will happen, and if this yeah. happens, this will. Happen. Yeah. I, I'm... Um, however, going back to the other thing you were saying, LARPers play villains. Mm. Um, and with some new people coming into the systems, etc., yeah. there has to be that clarity that a person may say things which are a performance yeah. mm. rather than what they actually believe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. making sure that, that is absolutely clear is going to be <clears throat> very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, if 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 we That's... go back to the, you know, uh, kidnapping someone or what have you, maybe maybe that should actually be broached as a subject to begin with. Uh, is you know, someone goes, is it well, all right if we kidnap you uh, later on? <laughs> but, but also, there's there, there's refs. That's why you've got refs there. Yeah, you know. And I think um, coming back to what Gideon was saying about saying things. Uh, and about talking and having that open. I think I'd be mortified if I would said something that offended someone and then they didn't say anything back to me for me to be able to go, oh, crap, I'm really sorry. I didn't realise that. But, you know, kind of because people do have naturally they've own they've got their own personal baggage that's what i'm going to call it to, to for want of a better phrase yeah. um and i think you know in in a larping environment you, you can't bring that into into what you do if you're going to have a successful larp um but i think if people do offend you you must give them the opportunity to be able to say and you know and, and understand what it is that you're trying to you know put over what offends you so that you get that opportunity to make things right yeah because yeah, this yeah. is what i see in 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 hollywood now isn't it there's is all of this blame culture and no one sat there going i'm sorry i didn't realize i'd even offended you yeah. or and maybe if i said something i hadn't even realized that this was going to be blown out into this kind of proportion i'm sorry i didn't realize yeah. because i think you know, realistically, people would now. There are obviously parameters to this. You can't just say sorry for absolutely anything you do. Well, um, yeah. But like you say, it's that dialogue is going to be massive, massively important. Yeah, I mean, I, one of the things I'd like to just, just quickly, well, the couple of things I'd like to quickly kick, 
chicken anyway. The first one, if rap rap involves an element of performance, mm. and they, uh, yeah, it's also it, it's entirely appropriate that a performance may make you feel emotionally uncomfortable yeah. or even offended because it is doing its job if it's connected to you at a deep emotional level. So if somebody's offended, as we said at the lab, it's not because the person saying it believes it, it's because that performance requires it. And if they feel offended, then that lab had a positive, had an emotional output. It's had its desired effect. Yeah. So yeah. If, if, if we can't just say do not offend because that, in its essence, takes away what we're trying to achieve. We're trying well, to be... achieve an emotional output. But, and also, thinking about, about... going back, we've mentioned Hollywood a lot as well, and a lot of the stuff going on the stage. And one of the things I'm concerned mm. about that's happening a lot now is a lot of blame going on. Yeah. And I'm very concerned that we're not getting remedies. But also, if, if offences have taken place, we're not getting people who can never actually have a fair trial, mm. which is also, also completely wrong yeah. for the rule of law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, everything at the moment is sort of dragged out in the media because, uh, you know, we, as we know, the media love to uh, report on nice, positive, fluffy things. Um, and, you know, and, and, and people are being victimized and villainized um, before, uh, basically on one person's word. There, yeah. are, there, there are three sides to every story, you know, um, my word, your word and the truth. Uh, I've always believed that. And that's why I try to be as impartial in my head as I can. But. Mm -hmm. um yeah so it is difficult and uh, you know <clears throat> and does need to be considered but i don't i didn't want to labor this point too much because this mm -hmm. is a fun show and we you know <laughs> i, I do <did, laughs> but i thought it's it's it's, it's good it's, it's good to kind of bring it up to bring it up um and um, and yeah. make sure the dialogue sure happens, the dialogue happens. Well, we yeah. must also, also never uh, not, not mention these things and, and want to talk about them because this is this is exactly the right forum to do this in and to get opinions and to provoke that discussion but it must be a discussion it can't be a yeah. you know kind of um can't villainize and, and really what do get in was saying about the performance element of it as well you know it's it's really important that that's it is a fine line that we do we do tread quite a lot when you're playing a villain because you you know you will provoke a reaction with people but i think you know, again, coming back to good management, strong leadership and, you know, kind of um, and inf informing people of the scenario. And, and if people are concerned about, you know, accepting that people can get offended and understanding that we don't know people's history. So, yeah. you know, and opening that dialogue, I think, is massively important. You know, yeah, talk yeah, to people yeah. if they're not if they're not happy about it. Then if yeah. we if it could be a simple remedy, you don't bring it up again and that's easy to do. Well, then fine. But let's talk about that. Let's not just bottle it all up yeah, and that's right, lose. Yeah potentially some really good role players that's right we've, mm -hmm. we, we've got a few people sort of um uh, uh coming on on the chat on, on facebook um ram uh basically sort of says some people take political correctness too far wanting to ban drow makeup or beastkin makeup oh come on get a grip um the other one is is adam uh sort of says might be sort of pragmatic nature but for me larp is an escape from real life so anything said to me is in game yeah mm -hmm. but yep. then um katarina uh says which is kind of a, a, a juxtaposed point on this is um offenses uh, as part of the performance is fine however it is not okay to fight to hide a fence behind o performance it yes can no, a, it, can, it can be a very fine line and i'm enjoying the discussion well, well thank you uh uh, mm -hmm. Kath Katharina, I'm sorry I got your name slightly wrong in the beginning then, but the text is very small on my screen, and I don't have any <laughs> eyes. So <laughs> It's true, because you've been facing the other way, Stuart, for the whole show. So, I know. Uh, Who knew? Yeah, I thought I'd bring that up now. Who knew? <clears throat> yeah. oh, um, and, I and I think Gideon wants to say something as well. He I was actually just going to point out um, yeah. that because we run often, in the UK at least, quite fantasy-evoked yeah, perhaps yeah. less serious laughs. Yeah, the yeah. things that can suddenly jump out of the woodwork are as upsetting or emotionally convoluted can be a surprise to everyone involved. Mm -hmm. Everybody's relaxed, everybody's having yeah. a laugh, we're doing some role playing, and something has affected somebody that even they weren't aware was going to. Yeah, uh, yeah. I had to play a relative of someone in an event once, and it turned out that. 
that was a history that they hadn't particularly considered before. Okay. Um, and because there's an emotional involvement there, you then have to be kind enough to consider it in the future. Mm. Yeah, but that, that comes back to um, people could make mistakes. When I take on what Katarina was saying, that, you know, it's fine saying this, but if you, you know, there are always going to be that, that small percentage of people who are quite villainous anyway, naturally, mm -hmm. um, will use this as, as a kind of like a mask. And, and I do object to that because I think that, that defeats the whole point of laughing. Um, so I take on board what she's saying there, and I think yeah, she's quite yeah, right in, in what she's saying. Um, um, but I, I do also think that we should we should also not make, as Stu was so rightly saying, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one to you know, to take too far. I think it's worth discussing, but I think what we've got to do is also set the standard and say, it's not okay, but let's not make a massive issue of this too, that our our scheme rules, the, you know, kind of the, the rules of the game should be enough to cope with this. Um, mm -hmm. And we should be open enough to be able to talk. I mean, we're LARPers, so we, we publicly perform, the, you know, kind of all the time. Um, if we can't talk to each other about what truly matters, which is, you know, kind of um, the, the game, then we, we've we've lost already, haven't we? Yeah, agreed. Very true. Yeah, completely agreed. Yeah. Uh, um, y y yes? I, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> I, I mean, I've just been listening to the thinkers do to mm -hmm. technical issues, and, and some I agree, some I disagree with. Um, I feel that it's, it's, it's everyone's responsibility in the LARP to do something about it if you see something because we have to also take in consideration how people react to certain events as Gideon said some unexpected things can happen yep. and people can have unexpected consequences to that yeah and if even they didn't know or maybe they did know or someone tried or, or someone offended um accidentally or yeah. even in the worst case scenario purposefully and I feel it's everyone's role to see what that has done to that person and perhaps even to step in to try and assist because a certain word, a certain phrase, a certain action can have devastating consequences to someone who has had a, a very traumatic experience mm. in their life. I mean, it can be truly thick. And that is why for me personally, I have absolute zero tolerance for any, anything like that. I It'll mean, I understand... Careful, Sorry? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, zero tolerance is fine because I think that's quite right that you shouldn't have. We, we, none of us should. But what you've then just also intimated is that people can't make mistakes. And I think it, it's kind of dangerous territory if we say we have zero tolerance, an absolute zero tolerance, because then we've got to know everyone's history. And I'd, I'd, there are things quite. about me that I don't want to tell you. Not quite. Uh, that, you uh, know, uh, I understand what you can. That's not quite what I meant. Uh, right. By zero tolerance, I meant that uh, all, um, certain rules have already been established. Yeah. In yeah. That. So, for example, if someone says, I don't know, domestic violence or something mm. like that, it's flat out. Now, if someone actually does domestic violence, you, you know, something like that, zero tolerance. No, you saw the rules. No. OK, mm. that's it. Whether it's a warning to start off with and then a ban, that's, you know, but. Once that's happened, the people learn from it. So if that person has a react a certain type of abuse or whatever, yeah, I think everyone around there should acknowledge that and at least be considerate to not actually do something similar again during that lab. I think we have to. I mean, it's all very well yeah. and good to say political correctness and I all am, this. Well, I think you have to take the person's feelings in consideration and their own well-being. Yeah, I am. I am right there. I am right there with you on on, on that, Tom. The, the problem is, and, and you and I both know, Luke knows, Rob knows, Gideon probably knows. Uh, when whenever that sort of you know, if ever that mm. question's ever come up, you know, has anybody got a problem with blah 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 yeah. blah? Right? They don't want to make it not fun for everyone else. Yeah, 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 and then absolutely. and they and they don't stick their hand up. You know, there are those mm. who go like, yeah, I definitely yeah. don't like that, but there are those. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then they are the ones that get offended. So what Luke is yeah. what Luke is saying, you know, is that people can make genuine mistakes, you know, based on those guidelines oh, yeah. and, and what have you. And, Absolutely. And you know, there should be a mechanism in place to resolve that 
mm. without it being upsetting for both parties. Because yeah. I'd be mortified if I actually sort of um, uh, made anybody sort of uh, very unhappy and what have you, unless I knew that, the, you know, I know, for instance, Luke can emotionally take the crap that I dish out to him. Um, you know, I know. But Rob... there have been times where that's that's we've had to talk, haven't we? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, there have been times. And, where, and, but where... that has been. It's we're, been difficult. We're afterwards, we're afterwards, yeah. you know, Luke yeah. sat to pull me to one side and go, Oi, knob jockey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, um, yes, of course, of and, course. and then my, sort of slap me around a bit. But, you know, hey, I enjoy that sort of thing anyway. My, yeah. my, point is, my point is more that when the group actually acknowledges that there is something and they just ignore that acknowledgement. And yeah. oh, that's, because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's my laugh. That's more yeah. that I was uh, going. I, Not I that think, you, um, you have to be a seer and know all people's, you know. <laughs> No. Well, I think that's the, it, that's the fine line we all tread, though, isn't yeah. it? Is yeah. that you, you know, kind of um, you can you can be in a bad mood, you can mm. be in the wrong frame of mind, mm. you could you could take two things completely differently on two different days, um, and I think that this is this is the danger area, this is the red zone, isn't it? Mm. So f mm. for me, I think we should. I mean, I think we should be aware. Like I say, we don't know everyone's personal baggage for want of yeah. a better word and it's their lives it's it's their it's it's theirs and you know and if they choose to tell you that's up to them if yes. they don't it makes yeah. it very difficult to be able to say well we could have fended that off yeah, yeah and yeah. i think that's the dangerous thing i think what we've got to do is is be open that larping we're always treading we're always on this type rope all the time um and so as long as we can talk to each other uh, and say look actually can we not do this anymore? And like mm. Thomas was saying, and then the group react to yeah. that yeah. in a very positive way. You, mm. You've got to be able to say, look, I'm not happy. And everyone go, fine, then we'll just go and do something else. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. And I, you don't want to make it a big issue. And actually, a lot yeah. of people who've been through big things don't want to make it an issue. No, that's, that's right. um, God, no. yeah. And I think that's where we've got to talk. And I suppose, Gideon, we, do you remember that, that one interview that we did about disability? Yeah. Um, and one of the things that one of the, the, the lovely ladies came out with, I've forgotten who it was who said this now. She said, ask me and I will tell you. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that, that was such like a Catherine. wonderful thing yeah, to say. I think. <laughs> because I sat there. We was, and everyone is so scared to talk about things that in the end, we just don't. And mm. then we try and make decisions for people uh, without actually asking them what they want. Um, yeah, and, and I think that's a big issue, isn't it, as well? I'll talk about anything, me. But um, Adam, Adam in the chat, uh, you know, has definitely come up, and he's 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 kind of sort of echoing our, our sentiments, uh, you know. But you know, but the issues arise that you would have to know what people have been through, but we need to make sure that people feel safe enough yeah. to confide yeah. in a ref in the, or come absolutely, forward. absolutely, Ig ignoring um, abuse no matter what it is is just non-forgivable mm. in any lab you know in big laps yeah. small laps it's just not forgivable yeah. you ha if you're a ref or you're only you have to deal with it yeah so i've I heard know. of mm. I've, not, I've heard of things in the big big laps that sometimes refs just go you know because they don't want to upset people <laughs> or something like that and that's <clears throat> just unforgivable for me they've never laughed with us then uh -huh. <laughs> We've upset a lot of refs. Uh, <laughs> I don't think. Well, upsetting of... refs is a big part of the fun. Yeah. You know <laughs> so yeah, let's turn that on its head now. Abuse from both sides, but as long as it's a ref, it's all right. Um, that's Always. what we've basically fair, come out with. Fair game. Fair game. Don't have somebody feelings or lives. You guys. They just are Noted. refs. And they've had it coming. <laughs> you know, that kid in said, as someone that has refed for you guys. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> you know, Rob, because um, uh, we were hoping to go down to another one night. Do you think we're going to die horribly as soon as we actually get out? Oh, we won't no. even get our kids on. Well, they go, I'm terribly sorry. What you do you died mean, again. What do you mean, do we think we're going to die horribly? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a story. Let me tell you a story about how you died. Uh, it's going to be Gideon's opening gambit. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> then the pins haven't worked. Um... <laughs> that's, a, that's okay, Luke. As long as we as long as we get a chance to to, to, to roll in, I, and I think this chance may be coming up this year. For if what I've been I've been hearing from Gideon is right. We. They, would it be a chance to play some monks again, Gideon? 
<laughs> yep, we're back to <laughs> San. Oh, back. No. In oh, no, in his requiem. God, <laughs> we couldn't even remember that. To be honest with you, we came in. and then there were the two old guys. Remember, we played the two old guards. Yeah, yeah. that was fantastic. Uh, and you know, all kind all of about the uh, tea. Yeah. It's all about the tea. It's all about Don't tea. tell him yeah. your name, Pike. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him your name, Pike. Oh. Yeah, that's what he came across as. And there you go, Gideon. You're getting some more love tonight, mate. Um, yeah. Rochelle said, you know, that she's a shy person with a horrible past, and I would find it hard to talk to someone I don't know. Whereas if I came to a lab with Gideon, for example, I would have no problem yeah. talking to him. I'd have no problem talking to you as well, mate. I've got, I've got a wonderful, yeah. horrible past, mainly because of Luke. But apart from that. <laughs> I understand. So, have a couple of beers. Yeah. We'll discuss it. That, that, that yeah. is a good point, though. The trust mm. of oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, rest, yeah. it's yeah. vital. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, vital. and when you think about it, if you're going into a LARP, and I think this is what we, we must encourage, if you're going into a LARP and you do feel uncomfortable about talking to people, then you have to accept that if you don't say anything, then people could tread out, you know, over that line. And I think that's the, the important thing is that the refs are ready to talk to you. Yeah. In fact, because because well, yeah. they'd rather you did say something and pull them aside and, and go, look, actually, if this kicks off or we start to talk about these kind of things, can you just keep me out of it? Or can you give me something to do or, you know, kind of mm-hmm. sign away from it? Mm-hmm. Because I, I, nearly all the refs that I know would be mortified if you didn't. Yeah. Um, and, and actually really want you to have as much of a good time as the next person. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And I've refed a few times, oh, yeah, actually. Indeed. It's critical. Go on, Gideon. We've discussed this in terms largely of small LARPs. How yeah. do we think this works for bigger festivals? I feel yeah. bigger LARPs that there's more onus on the actual LARPers than the refs. Mm. So, for example, LARPers have to come forward to the refs more um, so, for example, if you witness something or, you know, like, something you know, something along those lines, yeah. because there just aren't enough refs to do the thousands upon mm. fact, it's just not physically possible to do it. It just it just isn't possible. I feel that it needs LARPers to step in and say, hang on, you're crossing the line there, back off or just go to a ref and say, look, I'm not sure. But I think they're crossing the line. Would you mind having a word, making yeah, yeah. sure that that person's OK? It's I think it's a lot about community and what we've been mm-hmm. talking about communication. I think it's vital in all walks of LARP and life is communication would be key. But you can you can do that, can't you? If you feel that someone is, is getting mm-hmm. kind of not necessarily picked on, but they're not coping very well with the situation. Sometimes what I have done is I've come to their come to their yeah. side in character. Yeah. yeah. And then what I've done is I've just put my weight in front of them and gone, don't speak to them like that and start and just taken yeah. the, the heat off them a little bit. Yeah. And then yeah. afterwards I've gone and go, You're okay. You know. Yeah. Because a lot of people quite value they they don't just they just don't know how to cope with it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, absolutely, and absolutely. LARPing in, in larger like the gathering and, and I'm only going to go to the gathering because it's the only really big one I've actually ever, you know, kind of been to in a long time. Um, I, I see where Tom is that's, coming from. They just gonna, aren't. The, that's, that's going to change in August. It is going to change in August, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and and it, it's it's going to it, it is it is something that you, I think we do. You've got to be very very careful about because, like I say, new people can yeah. be very overwhelmed very quickly. Oh yeah. And of course, there isn't the support that to go and cause trouble in you know the gathering. Um, just purely because we were never going to be part of the plot. So we just mm-hmm. went and picked on people, um, you know, and, and started in character fights and, yeah. you know, the odd occasional war. Yeah. Uh, minor there. details. There, but, was um, never, there was never any animosity. It was all, always in good fun. Yes. You know, always. It's always good fun. good fun. Yeah. To be fair, in the larger LARPs, it's not even the actual LARPing or the game itself that concerns me. Mm. But the drinking after time out. Yeah, when people yeah. get messy, they don't know everyone around them. They they don't have the same yeah. social contracts. They're wandering from camp to camp, just drinking. Yeah, and that I feel is where problems can arise. Oh, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. In, in fact, I think there was a case not so long ago, wasn't there, where a guy got ejected. I think it was from the gathering. I could be completely wrong. 
um, because yeah, he was um, he was very drunk uh, and very lewd and uh, a very lewd and rude type thing, um, and basically yeah, they uh, they kind of uh, kept him to one side until the morning when he sobered up, and then uh, get off the Kicked side. But yeah, yeah, you know, so they and did they did their due so. diligence. You know, they they they, they did this sort of uh, let's uh, look after let's the, guy look the guy overnight. Well done to them. Well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's it's a difficult, difficult one to try and, and you know to, you know, to get, get right because, because, like I say, some people don't have any filters, like you were saying there, Gideon. They they have a drink and they don't know when to stop, mm. or they you know they'll have a drink and then don't know when to stop saying things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and that's where probably where the abuse may get out of hand a little bit, you know, because people do lose their social conscience, don't they? The the moral compass, for want of a better word, and that can become really really bad. In, in, um, in my opinion, then, if they know that and you don't drink, I have no yeah, sense towards them whatsoever. I, if you I think, know that, don't drink as much as you think. Yeah. It's just about management. It, yeah. Well, you know, Stewie doesn't drink at all now. Yeah. I'm not too sure why. Um, <laughs> you know why. Yeah. <laughs> does he, yeah, does he come on rather strong, Luke? Does he well, on? it's just... I don't mind it, but it's funny how <laughs> my leg um, that it gets... <laughs> It's, it's done, so he just won't stop, you know, um, and it, it can get a, a bit painful. And then he'll start on the other leg, uh, and then he starts on Rob's legs, and you know how unstable Rob can be. And apparently, uh, Sainsbury's really don't like you doing that in their store. So. Yeah, they find it quite funny. Uh, Who knew? Yeah. Who? <laughs> it's one of those things that they we're all breaking new territory there, weren't we? <laughs> Finding new borders and barriers and, you know, apparently dry humping each other in Sainsbury's is not considered fair contact or play. Maybe no, I, I, maybe I, if we hadn't done it in the biscuit aisle, it would have been something different. <sighs> you know. Yeah, yeah, point taken. <laughs> going to buy any hobnobs from uh, Sainsbury's then? Aren't <laughs> no, you're, just making yeah. it, you're just making it rude it's, now. It's really worse, <laughs> honestly. Which is pretty impressive because, uh, <laughs> you know... Mm. OK, well, you know, if, if you have any thoughts about this, you know, uh, in the chat, then please let us know. Um, or if you have any thoughts any, anyway, uh, don't forget to uh, email us, contact us at larpbook.com. Uh, and your views and fears, you know, this might become a bit of a uh, a page on, on, on larpbook.com because it has been a very interesting discussion. And maybe we can get some things going on this. So uh, let's mm -hmm. uh, let's see what we can do about that. But um, let's 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 move on, I think, a little bit before. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that, uh, uh, Katharina. Uh, we didn't mean yeah. to make you uh, spit out your tea, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 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 what we it's what we try to do. If we haven't at least <laughs> made somebody spit out their tea uh, within a show, then we haven't been doing it right. It's a fail. And, and anyone with hobnobs as well is going to be sat there looking at him, going, "That's why, that's why I can't eat any of those." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just throwing out the pack. I'll say, oh, I'm, I'm yeah, through. No, I'm, I'm going back to digestives. Yeah. That's yeah. it. So I'm finished. Oh no. But no, don't, don't, no, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> don't go away. I guess this. What, what, uh, <laughs> what LARPs do you gentlemen play? Uh, that comes from uh, Ram again. Oh, God, mate. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, do, do, do you want to go around the, around the screen, Stu? Yeah, go on then. Point at somebody, point at somebody and then we'll go around the screen from there. Well, me pointing at someone probably won't work because you're okay. probably on the wrong, the, wrong, the wrong place <laughs> we are. On, on, on my screen. Yeah. Right, so so, so let's on, let's then. start with our guest because it's only the polite thing to do. Gideon, yeah. what last <laughs> scene do you play? Um, well, clearly, I run one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I help with running Forest Sergeant and occasionally Fairy Tales events. Um, I've been doing Blood Red Roses most recently, um, which is really good. Uh, let's see now, what have I managed to get to? I used to do Curious Pastimes. I dabbled with shards. Um, back in the late 90s, I made a habit of going to as many as I could, so it's a long list. <laughs> um, Fools and Heroes. Um, yeah. So, though, to be honest, so, much to my annoyance, I haven't got to as many as I would like recently. But, I've been but, kept pretty busy. A well-travelled LARPer. But a, a good, <laughs> Best a, way. A good few. Uh, Luke? You learn all the damage calls. You can put them all in your own <laughs> system. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, well, like um, like Stuart, really. I mean, I've I'm, I'm into the pirate scene at the moment. Um, so you going are? to Brixham, ah, uh, Brixham, Liverpool. Um, we uh-huh. there's there's quite a few going on around the country. And in fact, I'm helping uh, Ellie Prentice, uh, who hopefully will be on the show soon, talking about the August event that we're running fairly close to where I live, um, which is a kind of spin-off from the Caldecott uh, Pirate Festival. So that's the Brotherhood of the Black, um, which is a fantastic opportunity for me to, to get involved behind the scenes. Um, previously, I mean, we've done uh, Twilight Realms, and they, they should always be given a good nod because they've made it a little bit of a revival, haven't they, recently? Mm-hmm. They're always definitely worth going to. Um, the Gathering and, you know, kind of um, Curious Pastimes, um, Kezzy's event. I forgot what he calls that, man. Balrog. Balrog Gaming. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so quite a few on, on that front, like Gideon, really, just, you know, kind of Another international bell- larp. old vet. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you could fix cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? He does it part time when he's going around the country doing uh, help and um, Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I've got a bone to pick with you, which uh, one? Stuart. Go on. Uh, when you said I was in Poland, which part of Poland did you think I was in? I don't know. Because I was never there. I was coming back from Solihull, and I, would, you know, I nearly crashed the car, <laughs> right? And I started going, "Where does he think I am?" <laughs> <laughs> What do you think I'm doing? I was in Poland once overnight, uh, working about just before Christmas. That was it. It was okay. one of those ones. What that are you doing next Tuesday? And I went, I don't know. And I went, go to Poland. I then. needed that. All I needed. <laughs> do you know how many swear words I came out with collectively and in the right sentence, completely correct order, on the way back from the M5? Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, but look, nobody would have noticed if that was about Stuart. I mean, everybody swears coming off the, off the M5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that lovely car park that is the M5. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Rob, then, LARPs. Okay, so I'll, I'll try and keep it brief. I, I mean, uh, okay, I can't talk. It's just terrible. Okay, so Teeth I, do like, I do like playing Forest Argent. Uh, which I wrote, yes, Gideon's <laughs> <laughs> a great, Gideon's a great ref. Um, there's Twilight Realms, which we've mentioned before. I'm a massive fan of Fear of the Dark because I was one of the early, early, early members, and they're just reviving it again at the moment. Very, um, still... very, very early members. Very, <laughs> very, very early members. Way, way, way back when he was formed. They came up high. I'm a big fan of that. I've been getting really into Curious Pastimes. Um, but I, I, I've been kind of quiet in the number of laps I've done over for a few years, so I'm trying to get into more this year. I tell you uh, what, though, you grovelling git, talking about yeah. Forest Argent, you just don't want to die. That's what it is. <laughs> isn't it? Yes. <laughs> you know you've pushed our ref far too hard, and you're not standing your ground here and going, "That's it, kill me. I don't care. <laughs> I don't worse. care." Worse. You know, don't, <laughs> yeah, you big girl. Don't, um, don't <laughs> like killing people and killing yeah. characters. Not when you can torture them. Yeah. 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 Bring it on it. and bring yeah. your stick. Don't I know it. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, don't, oh, yeah. don't I mean, forget. Yeah, I've got to say the, the the one that we did in Poland. Poland. Yeah, I've got to say I I we did we did fair with Manuk uh, about eighteen months ago, and I'm going back there in November, and I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Big, big, big. And I think you'll be seeing me come into a few more labs this year because we've already signed up for Green Cloaks and a few other things. Yeah, we definitely have. We definitely have. Uh, Buzzb? Uh, well, I'm very much the least, the most least experienced out of all the LARPers and the newbie, as you would. But uh, my primary ones are Twilight Realms and Balrog. I do attend a few Forest Argent when I can to help uh, uh, NPC and, and, and stuff like that, which is always a lot of good fun. And recently I just uh, went to my first Fear of the Dark event, which is one that I will be going to regularly as well. Uh, when I can. Um, I'm also hoping to perhaps get to Curious Pastimes. Yes. Now, I'm very much a small LARPer, but I am curious. You're not that short. You can get a bigger seat, mate. On the yeah. well, I mean, Loads of like stuff the, you can get. I like the shortness. It's easy to dodge things, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Very oh, good. that was too I easy. I went for several years and it was great fun. Yeah. yeah. I feel and that everyone should try it. At least. Yeah, I think I'm going to try it. And I think if there is a big... (laughs) There is a big lap that I'm going to actually really enjoy. 
the best chance I've got is probably Curious Pastimes because yeah, they seem to be more what I'm looking for yeah. in a LARP. Um, and perhaps some others, you know, um, if I'm available and a lot like uh, 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 Green Cloaks, did you say? Yeah. Um, I might go to that one. Isn't, isn't that the post-apocalyptic one? Uh, it's the one it's that's set sci-fi. in the future. Yeah, sci-fi. Set, set in the future, sci-fi. But it's, yeah. it's sword and shields and nerf guns. Oh, let's might, not forget, you we're have. going to LARPCon as well, aren't we? We are. LARPCon LARP as well. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and before that, there's going to be, don't forget, let's have a little shout out for... Um, the kit, the kit fair coming up from Gloucester. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. just uh, Jamie, Jamie's just chimed in. Uh, Jamie, nice to see you, mate. Um, and you died, Thomas Busby. Uh, just sort of getting that one in there. Uh, oh, just... you didn't let that one out. <laughs> oh, I died, Tom. Oh no, he doesn't even know. Oh, that's even I don't worse. Dying. <laughs> Nothing died. says. Oh my, that's that's dead to me now. <laughs> and they don't even tell you. When were you ever going to tell him, Jamie? Oh, that's going to be the problem. Cool. Oh, is it, I, that's I reckon cool. that's future. I think that's going to be at the next event. <laughs> He's just telling me now. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> and actually, talking about the child from just Adam's popped Spoilers. a couple of things in I want to mention. Yeah. Uh, one, he wants to know, he wants, he's asking me, Gideon, when are we going to finish off after the heat ray? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would love yeah. to finish that, yeah. <laughs> um, post apoc after the War of the Worlds. I remember so. you talking about that, yeah. yeah. I had to call up. No, I really want to finish that. That was great. Yes. <clears throat> ah, yeah, sorry. Cool. I yeah. see you have found my heat ray. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a little bit like that, yeah. <laughs> 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 and you're the and you're the one from Adam. He all he said is Gideon the Sonic Bell Trap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've got that one. I'll I'll, I'll put that up. Uh, I'll put that up on screen. <laughs> I, may have, I may have killed someone at a day event with some bells on string. <laughs> <laughs> How did they take that? <laughs> Pretty well. Oh. Pretty well. Actually, oh, and, and another one for Gideon. Gideon. Yeah. Rachel wants to know when you're getting a divorce. <laughs> Didn't know we did uh, dating as well. Is yeah. this is LARP date? Many years ago, many oh. many years ago, <laughs> I had to play a god who got married to a mortal. Happens and all the Rachel, time. yeah, poor Rachel played the character. <laughs> oh, poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to the um, the Mayfest and marrying a woodwitch, and um, she okay. gave me splinters. Ooh. Yes, she did. Oh, well, me. we will also use the 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 term "she" in inverted commas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, her name was Bernard. Um, <laughs> um... Yeah. She, you never know. <laughs> and going back to inappropriate behaviour, I might have written a lap once, which forced the player to marry a, a chaos god against their will, oh. and and cross dressed at the same time. So oh, I probably hit, probably furious. Better, this is. Cross, so I probably, I probably, I probably, I probably not a few, a few that one. So, <laughs> this has become furious. that LARP show where we all just admit the terrible things we did. <laughs> <laughs> this is like yes, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, isn't it? Hello, my name's yeah. Luke, I've been a LARPer now, and yeah. I'd like to admit to 15 things and have 48 other cases to be taken into consideration. <laughs> that is, that, that is ev- every show, Gideon. I mean, how many more this or what? I mean, you know. This is God. just us cleansing so, ourselves. That's all. We just happen to have people watch us. Uh, right. Well, I'll tell you what, then. Um, we've, 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 had, we've had a bit of fun there. Uh, let's, let's move on to the um, what, you, what we think our predictions uh, are for LARP for 2018. Right, so Gideon, you may as well be on this because you are, you know, on the show and what have you. What do you, th- what, what one thing do you think will happen to LARP in the year of our Lord 2018? I think there is going to be more big budget LARP um, coming out of the woodwork. Things like um, Doctor, the Doctor Strange and Mister Noel LARP, yeah. and. I think that LARP will bifurcate slightly okay. between the the very, very high-end events and the sort of smaller, more approachable local events. Okay. Um, and I, I think that that... I don't know whether that'll be a good thing or a bad thing, 
but I think that there'll be a market for both of them, and they will both expand this year. Okay, cool. Luke? Uh, wow, what will happen to LARP? Um, I, I hope Thomas's beard gets a little bit longer in 2018. I see that getting bigger. Yeah, yeah um, it has to be dwarf size by yeah, August. So I, I predict that by August that's going to have grown substantially. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping there are going to be more LARPs, and I, I really hope that um, that we try and encourage people through these kind of shows and through you know what Gideon's doing too to give it a go, you know. Um, yeah. And, and I, I definitely see year on year that is going. So I think 2018 is going to be the start. And if you haven't thought about going for a LARP, then just that's going to be my prediction. People are, are just going to go for it. Yeah, cool, Rob. Yeah, I'm going to be. Agree. Board. I think the app's going to continue to grow in 2018. I think it's going to get bigger than we thought. I think we're going to start to see more references in, in sort of mainstream media, like TV and mainstream websites, to either to LARP or to LARP like things that we hadn't spotted before. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Buzzb. Um, just to echo what uh, they've already, uh, everyone else has said, I think LARP is just going to continue uh, growing more and more as it becomes more and more i don't want to say mainstream i i you know I, what I, I mean more and more popular i hate that i, you know, I hate more that more approachable. i hate that, I hate that yeah, word yeah, too yeah, yeah, yeah. but more and more approachable for people and a bit of a wild card in there perhaps the introduction of technology into larping you know maybe that's the this is the year where they because i we've heard about uh, people doing apps for LARPing for on your yep. phone, yep. maybe even VR if it eventually does get to a certain level, because yeah, I've yeah. heard um, about VR going into LARPing and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think uh, maybe we might see a bit more technology into LARP. Yeah, cool. um, Talking of uh, technology, Gideon, you know, every time you take a glass of water, it looks as if the glass is disproportionately huge. Um, oh. And genuinely, the last time I thought you were going to drown yourself um, <laughs> because when the angle that we've got of you and when you actually kind of lift that glass, if you just do it again for us and people will see, it just looks as if it's a <laughs> how big oh, is that? I can't <laughs> see that now. Yeah, <laughs> it's just huge. I mean, how big is that tankard that you've got? I mean, I mean, haven't alcoholic you, special? Have, ha, haven't <laughs> and you that's se- not water. Have you not seen the small orange that I have, Luke? I mean, it's oh, just, you know, it's, it's well, I can read. That's got five hundred mil now. Exactly. It's only half a litre. You big pussy. Uh, um, the, Is okay. it big <laughs> or <laughs> far away? Oh. <laughs> the um. So my my prediction then is, I think that we are going to start seeing. LARP or LARP type things more in education. It's it's a hope of mine anyway, yeah. but in mm-hmm. and I really hate this word mainstream, <laughs> but in in mainstream education, I really sort of uh, think that we're going to start to see that more as 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 teaching uh, starts to evolve in, in in my mind, and they start looking at different ways to teach kids some really complicated and perhaps difficult subjects. Yeah. yeah, I think it would be perfect in history. Imagine learning on 1066, the Battle of Hastings, arming kids with swords and shields, and then let them beat the living crap. Okay, maybe not beat the living crap. Well, you know, you know but they'll actually, remember it. You know, that's been mooted, hasn't it, in bad education, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, with uh, Jack Whitehall, he does class wars, um, oh, well, and I think. Yeah, and, and I think that's brilliant. It's really, really good. Certainly when I teach, um, and, you know, you're looking for anything to make health and safety more interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Whenever I talk about um, LARPing, I actually physically can see people looking it up. Nice. Yeah, so uh, just talking about it makes uh, makes people think, oh, he's a bit of a weirdo, but let's just go and see what he's actually doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of... Oh, my yeah. God. Well, yeah. they, they they definitely get that, that sentiment right. He's a bit of a weirdo. Um, the... Um... <laughs> So uh, Debs Debs Myers has actually put up a question, so I thought we may well answer that before we actually sort of carry on. Um, So, and I'm not quite sure, so you may want to elaborate a little bit on this, Debs, but any advice for an up-and-coming LARP event? Well, this all kind of depends on where where you live in the world. Um, Yeah, geography is a big thing, yeah. To begin with. (laughs) Um, But there's there's the simple thing, so let's assume day event and move on from there. Boots, decent boots make sure you got them make sure the socks are good and make sure yes. you have a change just in yes. case mm-hmm. um, warm under layers 
dress for the occasion. Yeah. Yes, the character is important and all the rest of it, but if you freeze to death or overheat, you're not <laughs> going to have a good time. Yeah. Make sure you've got food. Make sure you've got water. Yeah. Make sure that you talk to the rep about what the the generic details are, where it is, when it is, etc., and that you can be there on time, and then get down to the nitty gritty with rules and what you're going to play. Mm. Yeah. My advice: always play a fighter first. Sounds strange, but fighters can do a whole bunch of other things like talk to people, yeah, or um, <laughs> or, you know, give advice or or have other skills depending on the system. But there will always be a call for whacking someone in the head when they get <laughs> heavy. So you no will talking. always be doing something and not bored at the back. Yeah, yeah. that's um, why we do monstering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it, it's you know, a it, week. Oh. As, oh, sorry, especially, sorry. If, okay. especially, thank you. Especially if you're if you're going into it the first time, don't don't be a magic user. Those rules are just they hurt my head. They hurt my head. And it's head. nothing more system, rude yeah, than when you're trying absolutely. to cast a spell and going, I cast the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As you start flicking it through the book. It just takes out the edge yeah. on the story, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, weekend event, make sure you've got a decent tent. Ah. Make sure you've got a very warm sleeping bag. Yeah. Yep. Make sure you have food and something to cook it on. Yeah. Basically, my, my advice is always be comfortable... You can do, you can then enjoy the event properly, because mm-hmm. um, if you're uncomfortable or, or uncertain, yeah. Uh, Debs Debs has, yeah. has elaborated everything that we we have said that is fantastic for anybody trying out LARP for for the first time. However, they're actually running their second LARP uh, event in August, <laughs> and they're looking for advice on running it. Um, maybe m- maybe they can get in touch with us after the show, and um, we can sort of uh, help them out. Is there anything? that they're stuck on. Um, I know all five of us here have good ideas and really bad ones uh, about just doing certain things, and we might be able to sort of help you out. So um, if you want to just uh, blast us an email, contact us at larpbook.com. Yeah, we'll we'll see what we can come up with. If there's anything that is, yeah. you know, you're finding a, a bit of a sticking point, you know, we already might know a way of getting around it or, or a, a way of implementing something. So, yeah. Strong be NPCs. More than, yeah. Can't go wrong with strong NPCs. Strong, strong yeah. NPCs and yeah. refs. And, uh, refs that know and drunken monks. Drunken monks are always good. Always good. good. Yeah. Drunk You've monks, had you can't go wrong. NPCs and very drunken monks. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah, and and Ram again. He basically says, "Yeah, my advice, my advice is try monstering in large events like uh, like Peter's Empire, and that's free to crew. I think it's free mm-hmm. in uh, Curious Pastimes as well, isn't it? Yes, uh, isn't it? Mm. yes. yeah, pretty so. Yeah, um, so yeah, so, yeah. yeah it's in mean, a lot of events, which is awesome. Yeah, that you also because don't get put off crewing because. A lot of events are free to crew, and it lets you really get to understand a system yeah, and yeah, the people yeah. and the feel and the culture of the place before mm-hmm. saying, yes, I want to now become a character and put a lot of money into costume yeah. and equipment and, yeah. and basically I'm going to attend all the time. It yeah. really helps. Nothing gives you more confidence than getting in someone's face and hitting them with a sword. <laughs> I mean, the confidence <laughs> you get from getting stuck in yeah, and the rest of the event will just be beautiful. Having said that. that, though, Tom, when I did my monkey on you, that's oh, it. It all tears. finished. I was in <laughs> tears on the floor. I was. That would still get me as well. By the, <laughs> it'd still get me. By the way, yeah. By the way, Luke, you you have a kindred spirit in the chat room. Uh, in Lee, all events need a comfy tent. I'm with him on oh, that. Yes. I'm with him on that. <laughs> oh, we do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, never rough it. Never rough it in an event. You're there to enjoy yourself, you know. Don't rough it. Because when you go to bed, you're just going to be miserable in the morning because you had I, a crap night. I can sleep in a bivy bag, mate. I don't need... <laughs> yeah, but that's... I can sleep in a bivy bag as long as it's in my bell tent and the wood <laughs> stove's there and the kettle's on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not... Especially the kettle being on. <laughs> I'm... I... I'm not saying I don't enjoy your tent, Luke, because obviously I do. You know, we have sort of stayed in there a number of times, and I've always gone. We've had you know, pop concerts in there. Yeah, you know, you know, and, and I've, I've, I've always said, can you, you know, can you turn the Wi-Fi on because I need to get me messages, that sort of thing. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know. And do you mind popping down into the wine cellar to get that, uh, <laughs> that, that Coke that, that, I, that I put down there? <laughs> no point in having a tent unless it's three floors. Exactly. 
<laughs> oh my god, Jesus. Oh. Oh well, right. Let's thank you. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> should we should we carry yeah. on? Yeah. Um. <laughs> right. So we do have um, a, a few shout outs as well uh, uh, of things that I, I have found and uh, uh, they've, they've kind of come our way as well. Uh, so these are a, a bit little adverts, really, more than anything else. Um, so here's one from uh, how do I pronounce that? Rob, is it just Gisido? Gisido, Gisido, Gisido. I'm actually I apologise because I we, we've chatted online, but I keep mispronouncing the name. Gisido, Gisido. Gisido anyway, Lap. anyway. So, is it, is your LARP on a winter hiatus, or are you simply looking for a LARP in the Central Ohio area? Regardless of your reasoning, consider Gisido, Gisido, Gis, whatever. Oh, um, don't though. say Gazebo. <laughs> <laughs> is um, it an evil gazebo? That's anyway. right, yeah. Um, so it's a so fun... There's more swearing in cars currently going on now, aren't there? Shouting the actual <laughs> yes. proper pronunciation. So it's a fan- <laughs> it's a fantasy LARP with steampunk elements, swords, sorcery and clockwork, so right up Luke Street. Yeah. Um, if you're into moderate co- uh, contact combat with a variety of weapons, combat styles, including live fire archery, siege engines, unarmed combat and flails... Or if you're into it, what? Or 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 if you're, or if you're into it, siege engines in your combat. Can I? Tom, you're so last year. Can I know? So you you have siege engines. Twenty eighteen, the year of siege combat. (laughs) So anyway, again, events events are held year round at Boy Scouts uh, Boy Scout camps uh, and their private venue, and a full weekend's player fee is only $30. So with the exchange Holy. rate at the moment, that's around about £6 for us. Um, so... <laughs> yeah, but you're forgetting the plane fare of over uh... £1,400 in order just to get there. A mere trifle. Um... Seeing the floor in that plan. <laughs> so, so if you are interested in learning more, you can follow this, uh, follow them on, on Facebook or on Twitter, or, of course, you can visit the website at www. Uh, I'm going to spell this out. Uh, G-I-S-I dolarp.com so that's g-i-s-i dolarp.com so that's that one um and now as long as i don't put the word hey in front of this one we should all be okay those with apple <laughs> phones anyway um siri sandquist uh, is actually on this year's uh Knuter punked program. I, I know I didn't get that right. Shut they up. don't really exist. They just Wait. want you to actually try and say them out and present them. That's yeah. all it is. It's yeah. not existing at all. We're going to get banned yeah. from Denmark and the States. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. And, and is hunting for keynotes. Um, so if you know someone who would love to hear uh, from on a particular topic, then you can write to her. Um, if you think that the speech would be would kind of fit into the themes and the themes are uh, hearts, personal experiences, uh, spades, LARP theory. I don't know what spades is. I have a clue. Uh, clubs, LARP logistics, diamond, practical experiences, Joker, LARP community or other. And you can actually sort of email that across to uh, program at knuktpunkt.se. That's K-N-U-T. P U N K T dot S E uh, and just mention keynote in the subject. Um, so that's me completely and utterly destroying uh, some names there. I've just been I've just been handing handed some birthday cards uh, by my wife of people that have come oh, round while we're doing God, this. That, oh, that did talk yeah. you about nearly an hour to mention that one, old man. Uh, you got it. How old that. are you now then, Stu? Um Thank <laughs> you. Still right. Uh, still not as old as Rob. Oh, oh, oh that. Mu- oh, <laughs> well, the, thing, the thing is, my my birthday is a few days before Stu's. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally uh, three days before. Three days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so happy birthday, you old fart! Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank you very much. Have you had any jelly today, Stuart, by the way? Have had any jelly? No. No, I, I, I came home and had to mop the floor, mate, because that's how my life rolls. Happy birthday. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday, mop-up. 
Yeah. Is that the sick from the party you had the night before? No, that's from the small bear that we call a puppy. <laughs> oh. See, yeah. I lost it then. I gave it to you. You just shot me down. I know. But that's <laughs> how I roll. That's how you roll. Um, <laughs> uh, see, there you go. Get, Katharina says that we can actually get to Ohio for 600 quid, slackers. <laughs> can we get back? No. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on, I think I've got that in my back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pay for everyone, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Stu... if there are any American labs that want us to come over and willing to pay for uh, said uh, thing, we're more than welcome to do coverage of that yeah. laugh event. Oh, and we are oh, willing <clears throat> to sell out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> literally. Which means we have no literally pride. I'd like to support tom in this by saying that i'll be the baggage handler for all of his <laughs> kit uh to help him achieve his goal um you know of, of attending any american larp where they are prepared to pay all of his funds to go there mm -hmm. and he actually does need has quite a, quite a lot of luggage um, I, I i need to be a sound man so uh, yeah. 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 what have you gideon's got his stick yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. 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 There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Gideon's happy to be the runner. That no yeah. problem. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do, Rob? A bit of weight. He's he's going to be chief, chief gaffer, mate. I mean, you know, he's uh, all, all all best grip. I think that's yes, what they're all doing. Best grip. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've seen. What when, kind when of sordid I, film set are we on? <laughs> when I, when, I don't know. when when I've seen that come up being come up in credits, I, I you know I've often thought of a best guy going going. Oh, <laughs> best grip. That's not your best one. Give me your best grip. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy lord. Uh, <laughs> seriously, yeah, best grip. And then was it a uh, best boy grip? And they go like, "Hello, are we getting a bit oh, too far?" Oh, now, oh, oh, it's just getting a bit getting too fine line now, isn't it? No? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But there we go. Uh, so yeah, we all happily sell out. Not a problem. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it. Is what we're getting at. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Uh, Jamie, you might need to elaborate a bit more. That uh, Stu, that I need to do a shout out to who? Uh, Lap next. Yeah, I'll just I'll check that up. Uh, Stu, need to do a shout out to Mike Roch LARP next. Okay, there you go. Shout out to Mike Roch LARP next. Whatever that means. I don't think Jamie. Jamie's been on the source again, obviously. He's um, been drinking. No, 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 no. I, I think he was hoping you pronounce it a little faster. Yeah, you have to do it quick. Yeah, <laughs> say it three times really quick. <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> no, no, I get it. No, I get it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie, but, you know, dyslexic. What so were you expecting? Happen. You don't read anything Jamie gives you. You know the rules. Oh. <sighs> I'm Amanda. just upset you read that one out. <laughs> I need I need Amanda hug and kiss. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I, can, I, can I get Amanda hug and kiss? Um, there we go. <laughs> there's, there's my impression of that. <laughs> Butchered it. Yeah, Lee, yeah, Lee, you're right. He butchered it. <laughs> he butchered it. Rock on, rock on. So, <laughs> are we about? Are we about done? Have we killed everything off now? I think. Yeah, we've offended shot everyone. In the head many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we can't go to the states, but I think <laughs> no, that's if anybody is Sweden, so we're fine. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. No we worries. Could. I can understand that. Oh, let me just sort of mention it very quickly as well before I, I do sort of do the end end of the show a bit uh, that we do now. We are now putting uh, products. Uh, that we sell, you know, the lot book mugs and T-shirts and things and all the rest of it um, on the Facebook page in the shop bit. So if you want to help out the show, uh, buy some wonderful goodies there. Yeah, because every, every little bit helps, you know, and you get swag. Mm -hmm. You know, you actually sort of get stuff like a mug and, and things like that. So, you know, that does all help. Um, so with that in mind, uh, let me sort of do the end of the show. First of all, uh, you know, to, to thank Gideon. Uh, for coming along and, and bearing with us, <laughs> putting up with it's us, a pleasure, really, lads. You know more than anything yeah. else, and uh, I do wish you. You know, I think we all we all obviously wish you all the best for your mm. endeavour with this shop, and and hope to get, hope to see you get more people into LARP, mate. You know, it's it's definitely the, the way the way to do it. You know, um, unless you're going to kill our characters and then you can shove it. <laughs> 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 Kill any character alike, mm -hmm. mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fighting Sultan, we're right back to abusing Lark again, aren't we? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'll have him knifed on the toilet. Proper pro like. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. Right, so let's actually sort of, um, you know, just get just to let everybody know. Yeah. So, again, a big thank you to all of our lovely patrons. Yeah, who actually make it a bit easier to keep this show going. You know, you do help for, to pay for things like like hosting and things like that, and that does help us out because it all comes out of our pockets uh, at the end of the day. Um, because we all have to have like real jobs and all the rest of it. Um, and of course, if you'd like to get in <laughs> contact with the show, just email contact us at larpbook.com. You know, if there's a topic you would like us to discuss, something cool you saw or you fancy, you know, writing an article for the website, then just email us, contact us at larpbook.com. Don't forget, it's also the same way you can promote one of your LARPs as well, or, or even a LARP that you're going to, to let people know that it actually exists. Just email the details across to contact us at com, and we'll get it up into the show or the website or on Facebook or whatever. Yeah, uh, we keep a lookout for those things as well. So, um, music was provided by Ben Sound at bensound.com. Uh, as I said, if you want to go across to the Patreon, it's obviously patreon.com forward slash LARPbook. Uh, the shop is now actually up on Facebook, so facebook.com forward slash LARPbook forward slash shop. Right, you can listen to the podcast in iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Twitch, Podbean. Just search for LARPbook, you know. And don't forget to write a review and sort of uh, things like that. The best place to do that is in uh, in iTunes because uh, that helps us out quite a bit as well. Um, again, go across to LARPbook.com because there's <coughs> loads of great articles up there, news reviews, etc. Uh, you can follow us, obviously, on Facebook, like you're doing right now, uh, Twitter and Google+. Plus. Just search for LARPbook and you will find us. Uh, and don't forget, as I said, give us a nice big five-star review on any of the podcast catches that you use to actually listen to the show. Um, all of the show notes for this can actually be found over on LARPbook.com when Rob gets round to doing it. I know he's a busy lad as well. So um, I've been Stuart Edwards, that's been Gideon Lorius, that's been Luke Pitt, that's been Robert Davis, and that's been Thomas of the Busby. So it's just a great big thank you very much and uh, a goodbye from us and a big thank you to Gideon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.